Welcome back guys. Today we're going to talk about valve lash adjustment. So you may be asking yourself, what is valve lash? Essentially all it is, is the area or gap in between the rocker and the valve. And what you need to do is to make sure that that is set appropriately. Uh, if you don't, you can run into a couple different issues. So if valve lash is too loose, like it is in this setting, with a rocker, there's a lot of movement, uh, you run the risk of having the rocker either come off or the push rod come out at higher RPM. Uh, but you also have an issue where the valve itself is being pushed down all the way. So in some aspects, you may not have a valve that opens at all, or it may not open enough, and it can cause a running condition. Then on the opposite end of that, if this is too tight, and this rocker is pushing down on this valve all the time, what it can do is that can lead to having the valve open and you can have a low compression or a running issue. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're adjusting these appropriately. So the engine that we're using for this today is just a small block Chevy 350. Uh, this procedure is pretty common for just about all of them. Uh, so this engine has a hydraulic lifter so what that means is inside this lifter, there's actually a spring. And what we need to do is preload that spring just enough so that it takes out any of the movement or valve lash in the valve train. Um, so this is something that you would do typically when you're doing an overhaul or say you had an engine that you replaced a camshaft in and this is a procedure that you need to follow to do that. So what you can see here is the push rod is moving up and down. And that's our valve lash. So I can take this push rod and I can move this up and down. And what that's doing is that's showing me that there isn't enough preload on this bolt right here. So in the center of the rockers, there's these self-locking nuts. And what they do is when you tighten them down, it'll pull down on the rocker to put pressure on the valve and on the push rod. So what we need to do is just slowly bring that nut down and what we're gonna do is when we tighten that, we're gonna feel for this push rod to move up and down. And once it gets to a point where it stops, that's gonna be our, what we call zero lash. And then what we're gonna have to do is adjust it more. And typically, we're gonna go three quarters to one full turn of that nut uh, in order to get our preload appropriate. And you just wanna make sure that if you're picking three quarters or you're picking one rotation, um, you're gonna do that evenly on all of them. So let's just show you how to do it real quick. All right, for this procedure, what you're gonna need is either a 5 8 or a 16 millimeter socket, and just a ratchet to be able to tighten this. So all I'm gonna do is I've placed this cylinder at what they call top dead cylinder. So this is number one cylinder. And what that means is that both the intake and exhaust valves are closed. So the camshaft is on its what they call base circle so that these valves are not getting pushed up. Um, so we're gonna start with this one cylinder just to show you the basics. So I'm just gonna pull up and down on this push rod and I'm gonna slowly start to tighten down on this nut until I can't feel this moving up and down anymore. All right, so now with that tightened, I'm trying to move up and down on this push rod and I'm not getting this to move at all. So now that all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ratchet and I'm gonna put it on the top of the nut and I'm just gonna take and turn this three quarters of a turn. So if I start at the top, all I need to do is come back over here. So just like kind of watching a clock. So three quarters of a turn and that will be good. So the specification on this is anywhere between three quarters and one turn. So like I said before, just make sure you're doing it you know, equally throughout all the rest of these. So if you were going to be doing this, the book usually says that uh, with the engine at number one cylinder, uh, adjust the exhaust valves on cylinders one, three, four, and eight, and then the intake valves for cylinders one, two, five, and seven. And then what you do is you'd rotate the motor over again uh, and do the additional ones. But what I usually find the easiest way of doing it is I'll set up cylinder one, and then I'll start to rotate the cylinders through. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for either my intake valve to start lifting, and if that does, that means my exhaust valve is on its, on its base circle. So what I can do is I can adjust my exhaust valve. 
and I can kind of go back and forth. So once my exhaust valve starts opening, I can start to do my intake valve. And you can just do this through the entire uh, array of cylinders on one bank and then on the other. I found that is probably the easiest way of doing it. Uh, where if you just take a, a breaker bar or a big ratchet on the crank pulley, you can just start rotating the engine through and doing them all individual that way. Um, I find it's a little bit more consistent so you're not jumping back and forth from cylinder to cylinder. Uh, you can just do them all on one bank at one time and then do the other ones on the other bank at the other time. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks again for watching. See you guys real soon.